Okay, uh, so let's get started today. Uh, let's start off with a little bit of information. If you want to submit your work for, uh, for critique, you just have to join us on the Reddit community. To get to that, go to isterback.com and click on the little Reddit icon. Um, that'll take you to our Reddit community. Join and submit your stuff. Uh, there's information about the current community challenge, which is a, an elemental themed character design. And a lot of you have already sent in uh, some of your um, blueprinting, uh, preliminary sketches, all of your planning and concepts. Uh, so if you guys want to be a part of this, um, you can join our Reddit community and submit your stuff to the community challenge. Uh, topic here. Reddit is working really weird. It's got a lot of glitches right now. For some reason, uh, topics aren't loading properly, sections here. Um, so we're, gonna, we're trying to figure that out and why that's even happening. Um, and if you want to join as a patron, go to istabrak.com. You can click on the little join me as a patron, uh, patreon.com slash istabrak. I've just sent out the assignment for uh, this month. If you want to get in early on some of the community challenges. So most of the challenges you see on the community I've already assigned to my patrons on the apprentice group. We do all kinds of stuff together. If you want to see the little trailer I've made uh, showcasing my apprentices, it's uh, pinned at the top of the Reddit community. Give that a watch. I worked really hard on the video. Um, but different tiers uh, mean different rewards and apprentices get the most rewards. Um, yeah, I ate really fast before, <laughs> before class. I hadn't eaten anything after the gym. Um, and uh, yeah, if you want to join as a watcher, it helps uh, uh, promote the longevity of our community. I don't work with sponsorships or agencies or, or any kind of marketing team. My, my channel does not yet have a, a channel rep. Uh, I'm not almost there. I just need 100K. Um, and so it's all me. It's everything that I do for this channel is pro bono. Uh, but if you want to support and help keep the channel alive, support your local PBS station <laughs> or support me. Um, I give out a lot of free free content, free education, and what you guys give back um, means the world. So thank you so much to everyone who's become a patron from Watcher um, all the way up to Apprentice. Um, so let's get started today. <clears throat> I was gonna. I was gonna take a look at this one last time. Sorry if I'm a bit sick. I'm not feeling very well, as is the the same old story. And I wanted to uh, talk about depth and organizing composition and storytelling. I'm sorry. I just need to cough. Okay. Um, so this is suffering in all degrees. So depth, composition. And storytelling um, and there's ways to fix it so I read the brief that the person handed this in with um, there are ways to fix it um, and while keeping it pretty much uh, the same kind of attitude uh, and there's a lot to be done so it's a very ambitious critique for me today um, so let me drink some water and get started Okay, <laughs> and for those who missed the purchase studio sale, there will be another one in a month to two months. Um, so if you missed it and you still want it on 50% off, there will be another sale. And these sales will come more frequently uh, towards the second half of the year compared to the first half. We don't really host that many sales towards the first half of the year. Um, so what you have here is a girl looking at a goldfish on some kind of mound thing. Thing that I don't understand that has leaves on it and there's someone in the background with a book and so they seem to be kindred spirits who hang out together with their pets and they practice magic at a magic school um, and they're in some kind of forested area okay then if we look at the composition you've got character, char and the best way to ask, assess if your composition is in a good spot without all of that measurement and mumbo jumbo is to, uh, what's a gray scale, this so is no particular color, is to just look, draw a red dot where you have all your points of interest, big old red dot, and then add in the gray background and is this ever is everything everywhere where you you know where it could be the best spot it could be and I would shift all of this towards this direction 
And that would be a better kind of organization of where everything should be. And I would move this a little bit more this way and have more of an intriguing distribution of objects. And then we have scale. So I would make sure this of them all is the smallest one, kind of in the distance. And I would have this one, whoops, shit, possibly be a son of a bitch. Really? God damn it, Photoshop! <laughs> Sorry. I forget if the stupid select thingy majiggy is. Is it auto select? Yeah. I don't know. Um, and I would make this fella here the biggest one out of all of them. These two the smallest, and I'd make this one slightly smaller, tucked closer. So that looks more interesting. But then again, we move back to where things were before, and everything seems all, all the way back there, all the way clustered toward the far uh, left, top left corner. So obviously we have to correct all that. Um, so how do I shift her back towards this position? Well, one thing that's happening and the most interesting in this whole scene is the goldfish. Out of all of it, the goldfish is the most interesting. This is the second most, I would say. Um, this is interesting only because it has depth in it. So I want to make her a little more interesting, <clears throat> but only because this is cute, it's attracting attention. So how do I move all of this stuff back uh, away um, towards the best, the most optimal points of interest positions? So the way to do that is to, you know, we want to move it, but we want to move it in the right way to make things more interesting. So what I want to try to do is have her kind of leaning on top of this thing, which I don't understand. I don't know what this thing is, this big inner tube. I'm just going to have her moving, or leaning on it, and I'm going to move her there. Son of a cow. Photoshop has not been my friend today. Taking off my flip flops because this is some serious business. <laughs> All right, let me paste this back on. So what I want to do is kind of just lean. Well, figure this out first. I want the head to be a little bit lower and. The character is kind of doing a little, like, interested lean forward on top of this thingy-mabob. And so their little tiny child elbow is <coughs> tucked out. Sorry about the coughs, you guys. out this way and you can even do like one hand leaning something like that something more interesting she's watching intently what the goldfish is doing and I'm just doing a pose here that m matches her expression the expression is really intense right now so we're trying to set it up and let's take a look at our nice. So we're in the new spot. And I'm just going to correct the background, patch that up a bit. <clears throat> and then move on to separating the fish from everything else. So let's decide. I just I just did this. I just fixed that error message. I just made it so that it doesn't show me again. God damn it. So let's disable this so that we can select things properly. And this is why I'm saying it's going to be very ambitious, a critique, because I want to select the fishy. Yeah, 
Simon. I still do manually. So I'm separating foreground from background deliberately because the depth is weak. So we talked about composition and I moved the point of interest. And we talked about um, depth, which is a problem. So I put that back there, separated this dude, brought this character back, reuniting it with the foreground looks a lot more interested and it makes a lot more sense what he's looking at but I do wish that the character had perspective on it so one way to create perspective is to just shift everything down and literally we just dragged everything down and I don't want it to look like characters OD'd so I'm just gonna make a little bit more forehead space because we've shifted obviously down and we're seeing more of the top of the nose less of the nostrils less chin and they just seem so friggin interested in what they're looking at and amazed too and I'd be amazed if I saw a glowing goldfish I mean they look like happy magic students and low head means high ears but because they're magical ears we really don't care and I'm just gonna give the hat a little bit more of an interesting shape because he seems to be repeating this really boring little bulbous shape and it's okay if not everything is in the perfect perspective. So look at the difference before. <laughs> they seem horrified instead of interested. And now they just look a little bit less intense and still interested. Um, okay, what else is up? So we have the depth now that we got to take care of. Let me tell you a little something about things that glow. Unless the goldfish was glowing brighter than the environment in this forest, go the goldfish would get dark wherever it exited its dark environment that allowed its glow to be visible. So the goldfish goes back to dark out here. It can stay light in here. And then as a general rule, I'm just going to shift everything into darkness on this half because for some reason you have atmospheric fade in the foreground. It was unforgivable. Alright, so I'm just going to select all this. Go back before I did it all. Merge, I mean, flatten, and then just put the new layer on darken. Okay. All right. Yeah. I I just want to use eraser. I'm literally pressing eraser. Oh, okay. Oh, you don't want me to do that? Okay, Photoshop. Uh-huh. What else? Stupid dumb piece of shit. All right. So I'm just erasing here because that golden glow of the fish comes back. And then I'm just going to let the fish get glowy just towards the start of its tail, but definitely shifting back into dark outside. And then the background. So we have this little character in the background. We need to really brighten up that background for us. <laughs> Photoshop, please, brother. <laughs> um, this girl is the same size in an awkward position. She also has an interesting pet. We're not really sure what the hell is going on with this girl here. So I'm just going to give her a position that is a little bit less important. And we're, again, working with our corrected glowing orbs. 
See how much easier it is to put glowing red orbs in composition than complicated characters. So do that for the love of God. Find a simple placeholder just so you can address one layer, one thin little sheet of the blueprint at a time and adjust the composition, a scary thing called composition. Adjust it, you know, to be a little bit uh, more easy to work with and less scary so that we're, we change the objects in the scene to red dots. That made it a lot more less scary to, to, to take care of this daunting problem that is composition. So, okay. So Photoshop and I aren't getting along and um, we're going to counseling. We're trying to make this work. But I really don't see a future, and I'm just worried about the kids. <laughs> this is so stupid. I don't know why I joke. Alright. So, that wrong layer. <clears throat> Alright, so you see we tuck these little dudes back over there. So, we're just correcting. I'll try to seam it a little bit better now that everything is a separate layer. I want to move this here a little bit more. There we go. And... <coughs> okay, uh, so we have these stem thingies. We have her friend in the background, which I'm not even going to bother with because I don't know what the story is. Alright, and then we are going to... lighten the background, so I'm just going to lighten the whole thing again. And then what we do in the background, in this case, um, let's lighten it just a little bit actually, what we do in the background now is what will make this whole composition kind of complete. We need to find a way to bring in this dragon so that he's still kind of doing his thing without the stems getting in the way of everything. And if there's more goldfish that you're bringing in, they're really not reading as goldfish, they're, they're reading as eel. It's not reading as goldfish for the other pieces. So I could be making a terrible mistake with all of this, but I could always backtrack. So we have the other dragon in the distance. And I'm just trying to create an interesting framing on this character with the dragon's tail that is in the background. And I just used a basic brush here. <coughs> I'm just trying to make it work with the time that I have. Alright, and so I'm just going to throw this into... background, bring in some super, super basic radial shading. And so now we have a more believable structure in the background for the tail. And then we have all of this. And if these are supposed to be trees, you've not really done that. You've kind of given us a a very, very general representation of the bark and then nothing else to help out to make the area feel like a little grotto or a cluster where a goldfish has nested that she's found and has looked at. So in this foreground, we need more environment and that's really going to fill the whole scene up. And then in the background now, you can add whatever else you had that was also 
repeating the same environment just with a smaller scale. So we're going to be here a while while I draw trees. So how's everybody been? Who's going to be, by show of hands, who's going to be joining the environment challenge? I mean the environment challenge. The um, uh, character design challenge, the creature design challenge, environment, elemental. <laughs> oh, no. No. Press shift five times. God help us with the sticky goddamn keys. <laughs> fucking Photoshop. So I reformatted my computer because I was getting way too many errors and way too many programs. And I, um, there's some things that I forgot to uh, adjust and I'm trying to control my temper at the moment. Oh, no. Trust me, you guys, I'm just as frustrated as you are. If not, most likely more so. I don't know other one is going to come, and uh, if I have, I can feel my stress levels spiking. <laughs> I just don't have time to go into shift keys right now. God, it can come at any moment. <laughs> and you can put these anywhere, really, because we've already, oh, I'm jumping every single time. We can put these little dudes anywhere because we've already established. See, that looks so pretty. The, uh, the composition carriers, which are these little dudes. This dragon, the reason why this dragon is now hidden is because I shrunk this little dude. Um, so you really didn't need that dragon there. And then finally you need a proper light environment color. Um, the sound stress <laughs> This uh, sound was really, really stressful. I'm so sorry for anyone who's been affected by this. Um, so I'm just selecting some areas to raise up into white. Oh, that's way too bright. What was I doing? <clears throat> and as I go up into white, I'm raising saturation. Okay, and I'm just selecting some sections to do this with, not every single section. Hmm, I'm not sure why it's not letting me. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> so let's take a look at the changes. Just composition reorganization. Have, have, uh, have made just the changes and the benefits of these changes. Before, you had a little bit of a <clears throat> pulled composition towards le the, the top left. Like we could crop up until here. This line and this line should have been the edges of the canvas, but you had all this extra space you weren't using. After. The story seems a little bit more concentrated now. This little mess here is going to take a while to fix, so just give me a, a second. But it kind of makes sense now what's happening. The expression they had before was shock, which I really wasn't understanding. There was less interest and more like, oh my god, did I just summon a goldfish demon. Less like, oh wow, look at this pretty goldfish. So we had to correct that. <clears throat> and now all you got to do is add your, your leaves, bring in a more focused direction from the light environment, and you should be good to go and bringing in your other little goldfish swimming around. And let me create a sample of that. So a goldfish is a chonker. So it needs a bit of a chunky shape, and it really, the tail should not be that long, and it should not be taking that much space. So make sure you're focusing more on the bulbous shape of the goldfish instead of making the body of the goldfish as thin as spindly as the tail, which is why it even read as um, an eel, because you weren't really doing that. You, you, you made a long body with a long tail and that's pretty much an eel. So focus on the bulbous shape of the chunky goldfish. So we got the body, we got the big chunky head, and then we got that. And I'm just gonna select that. And you see how many placeholders we can put down without having to 
render them. So you don't have to have a big red blob to have a placeholder. You can have the actual silhouette of the character there, just as a you know a quick little thumbnail. Okay, and then we have this character in the distance, which is um, still annoying me because I want to give them a spot. that is more appropriate to their size and importance. And you could make them a little bit smaller. So this, this character and her pet could be smaller in the distance. They could be, you know, this size. And she's just watching her friend, all interested. They don't have to be as large or in the way. And I shrunk them even more than when they start, when they were when we started off. And unless she has united her torso with the body of the dragon, your friend's friend needs to um, sit up a little higher. And that'll make it a lot easier for you to create a appropriate read for what's happening between these two. So you can have a bit of a relief here in between the arms where she's holding on to the horns maybe her legs are on either side or but as for them being what's that term in DBZ when they yeah fusion as for them being fused it was looking a little bit difficult to read Oh, I'm just doing a lot of patchwork here, and that's just for the sake of the education here. We really want to see the, the, the benefits of these composition rules. So her foot is going to stay a stub because there's just way too much to do. And I'm going to try to create the bigger impact before I make the goldfish glow a little bit more. And so the friend has more of a believable position there, and just watching her friend. She's kind of curious of her curiosity, and she's kind of just admiring her friend, or just having fun. <clears throat> okay, so butt ton of changes, but they're worth it, right? All that lassoing was worth it, so we could see the benefit of organizing just a little bit when it comes to composition. And I'm just going to continue this dragon back down to the rest of its body. And now the dragon doesn't have that much importance. So size in the dots isn't just about scale, but it's about general importance altogether. Okay. Um, and then there is the matter of darkening the lower half because we seem to be dealing with some kind of, not underwater, but deep uh, thickets of forest. So we have to create some better continuity here with the chunks of forest life. And that is going to look like that. Woo! Tons of shit to do. Okay. So, here's where the fun begins. We are going to darken the lower half of the background. And then that is going to darken the entire en environment dark enough to make these goldfish glow with the magic that with the magic of okay so M doesn't work apparently anymore sorry it, it's so glitchy I'm just gonna revert my Photoshop again okay so B um it's not painting. Hmm. OK. 
Okay. That's unusual. But we deal with it as we go. So, having that there, finishing all that up, and just probably about to see what I'm about to do. But I'm going to make these little fishies glow now appropriate to their light environment. We have a little bit of that light coming up from the top, so now I've created almost of a like a a light towards the top and then going back here and just bringing in that necessary glow. And that glow is going to go back and shine on the little character. And I've lost pen pressure, boys and girls. Pen pressure is gone. Maybe because I smacked my tablet around, but who knows? Could be anything, really. Could be a number of reasons. <laughs> So the inside of their little cap here gets more gold on it, which I'm actually, I think, about to go crazy. Okay, and uh, a little bit more gold here. Going back to the dodge tool. <laughs> I'm just pushing this as far as I want to go with it and then doing the same thing with the little fishies but I'm just going to use layer media stuff so outer glow is going to be normal the color is going to be golden or this color opacity is going to go all the way up spread it's going to be a little bit larger. So it goes down. Um, spread. Size. Okay. And then. Actual fish, get a little bit of dodge tool here and there. Okay. Things are reading a lot better. You can put in more, and now it makes sense. Now we know what's happening. Oh, they're traveling. They're students of magic. And unless she's collecting samples, she really shouldn't be holding a vial. So if she's going to be collecting samples, show something else that is helping her collect the samples. So Maybe a vial, instead of it being a chemistry, whatever this is, this big tube, make it an actual little vial um, with, a, with a cork in it. So, or maybe something that she's holding, like a pair of tweezers that helps her select leaves, or um, maybe she's already has the leaves in her hand. Maybe she already has samples in the vial as well that are helping, you know, that are part of her little research. So wherever it gets a little bit dark, I'm bringing in more glow because it's against an object that reveals the glow. Get it? So when it's against background, it's not as light. When it's against an object, it's going to glow. So it's not going to, the tail isn't going to glow the entire time, only in areas that are dark. So the more we darken that far half, burn. My stress levels are so high. They're as high as when I play League. And I'm just using Photoshop. <laughs> I really don't get what the heck is happening to my stress right now, but it's really high. So again, if you ever have any glowing components, you, you're, do, you're adding these glowing components um, with a nice dark background, just like we're doing with our, with our uh, elemental design challenge. Um, and uh, uh, 
if you're trying to show something is glowing and you're trying to establish like some kind of environment, um, you have to sacrifice one over the other. You can't have glowing components in a bright environment. It's just not going to happen. Uh, so make sure you choose the one that is appropriate. If there's a light behind, if this was supposed to be perspective and they're spiraling down to the camera like they're f in water, and it really is reading like they're in the water and they're underwater looking up at the light in this up at the sun in the sky um, then this didn't it really read as water what's keeping them underwater so uh, there's no bubbles there's no little protective shield so these must be to like above water fl floating goldfish I really don't know what to call them um, yeah uh, so I hope you liked today's critique hour. <laughs> I'm so awkward today because I'm so angry. Um, so before we had everything clustered toward the top, after we have a bit more of a believable story, I kind of want to bring back some of that brightness in the background just towards that far half. Just so it doesn't completely read as too dark. We have more spaces so by erasing I'm showing how there are still trees in the background there's just a lot of atmospheric perspective <clears throat> and this part of the character here is still reading as part of like the atmospheric perspective or something which is bad um, and then now if you want to bring in that atmospheric fog you can but really be careful. You're not trying to make it seem like the foreground is in the distance. So it's just a little bit of textured, and I recommend a nice textured brush for this. Textured fog in the background. And if you want to enlarge this entire section, do it. You're allowed to. Just, you know, lower it a little bit or try to find another way to show the rest of the tail. You can enlarge the character. I mean, unless these fish are huge, you can enlarge the character. Uh, the highlights are being moved. Okay, so that's good for scale. Maybe I can still move these fellas. And they'll still be in the right spot. Yeah, it works. Okay. It's just really important we keep the, the foreground dark. I, I would still darken the, uh, the foreground a little bit more. Oops, I need to darken with these lower mid-tones. Photoshop is lagging real bad on me right now. But I want some of that relief here, because that's going to be nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so any questions at all about today's critique hour? So re reorgan, because the, the question that was posed by the artists on Reddit was that they want to restart everything over again so that they can establish space. And I really didn't want them to do that. You can salvage a great deal of your mis like of, of what you have left and correct your mistakes without having to restart completely. Um, one thing I want to do is just throw the background out into the distance a little bit further. No, that's a lot better. Restarting it seems to fix it, okay. Um, and I, yeah, again, I didn't want you to restart the whole painting because uh, you had such good colors, you had a good idea of what you were doing, and there's a lot you can fix with Photoshop without having to restart, like just like how we fix the, the perspective on the face with just a liquify. Um, I think it's the size of the canvas as well. So before, kind of scared of the fish they just found, they don't seem interested, they, they seem horrified. Their other friend is like, yep, that's my fish. 
<laughs> they seem really happy with what they're seeing. We have eels everywhere that are supposed to be goldfish, but they're reading as eels because you just didn't scale the body of the fish right. And you have stems, but they're combining with the body of the dragon, and everything is just so confusing. So you want to use the pattern that you use for stems to be different, or, or branches to be different. This whole area has no continuity in it, so please ignore that. Um, yeah, with the, against the body of the dragon. So you want to bring in some scales. You want to keep working on this. Obviously, this is not done. Um, the critique could go on a little bit longer, but I'm just uh, tired. So <laughs> I'm really tired of Photoshop right now. Uh, yeah, I'll do something like that. Now, this is typically how I correct my stuff, too. I really just go on and on and on until I find that I've found the perfect balance between branch and, and, and dragon tail and fish. All right. All right. Uh, I just showed the before and after. You want to see it again? So composition was all the way towards the part top left. We moved it back down. Instead of having to restart, you can just reorganize. Didn't you just make too much of empty space between the two characters distance-wise? I mean, there is a defined foreground and defined background, but no middle depth, making it look like there is just empty space between the two characters. Not really. Um, they're in the foreground because they cross the distance from their friend. They don't have to be shoulder to shoulder with their friend the whole time. Why is it important that they're on the same level? Um, the friend is in the background, uh, curious about what they just found. I would change the expression of the friend. I'd make their uh, face a little bit more like concerned. Oh, where are you going? Oh, I just saw something really interesting. And then they're just enjoying the view. Um, so no, it, it's not important that they are exactly shoulder to shoulder the entire time. They're friends exploring the depths um, or exploring a tree, magical, um, uh, no water sea. Like it's like a sea without water. It's really cool. Um... Thank you so much for the critique. I'm sure I'll watch this many times though through as I work on addressing the issues. You're very welcome, Elsie. This is your piece. <clears throat> it's okay, it's a record. I love that composition. I love the colors used. Yeah, I love the colors used. Be beautiful job. Um, so if you guys want to submit your work for critique, just like um, you see here today, go to istabrak.com. Uh, and go to the Reddit icon to join. There is a community challenge that's really, really cool and fun that is currently being hosted on the Reddit Elemental Character Design Challenge. Design an elemental of your choice. Be original with the idea, but they have to glow in a dark environment. Um, so that's really fun to do. Uh, and I love glowing things. I love that. And then you, we have the option of making them male or female. Um, and just remember, no basic shit. No lava elemental, no spirit elemental, no water elementals. I don't want to see basic stuff. I want to see something new, something interesting. Um, I love, I'm loving what I'm seeing here, like galaxy elemental or something like that, like the matter used in galaxies. That's really, really interesting. Just don't make it look like a character. An elemental usually floats to some level or is rooted at some level, some magical component. If they're on their two feet like it's someone in cosplay, I'm not going to look at it in the in the critique hour. Well, I probably am, but I'm going to be extra harsh with it. So I don't want to see a character design with an elemental staff, okay? It's not, a, it's not a weapon design. It's not a character design specifically. It's a combination. It's a humanoid, a character and a, a, a creature at the same time. And they're made of it. They're made of the stuff. So we should be, like, I like how I'm seeing, this looks like galaxy, like, this looks so cool, like galaxy tails. I'm loving what I'm seeing here. Not so much what I'm seeing here because it looks like a very red character design. Um, and they're just a standing mage with a staff, if I'm not mistaken. I don't want to see any staffs, all right? They don't need the staff. They are the staff. So make sure you guys remember that. And uh, that's it. Have fun with it. No staffs, please. Have fun with it and uh, follow the rules so you learn how to work within a workplace environment that gives you restrictions and design parameters that you have to work within. Don't just go answering all your questions and giving yourself, breaking up, breaking all the rules and giving yourself all the licenses. You can't do that. And spend time on the idea, but don't, don't 
waste time trying to find an idea. You're never going to be original no matter how hard you try. You can just be original in your approach or you can combine different approaches together. You can look at other artists' work from the past, anything to get you started. And this assignment has a due date, like, and it's a very generous due date, unlike commissions and working for people, which has sometimes very, very uh, limited due dates within a week or two. Thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you guys on Tuesday at the 16th at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Bye everyone.